Hello and welcome to your monthly webinar from the Covidence UK study. My name is Adrian Martineau and I'm the Chief Investigator based here at Queen Mary University of London. Now in today's uh, webinar I thought it would be interesting to cover a couple of recent papers that have come out in a good journal, Nature Communications, um, both looking at long Covid. Uh, the first one a very large population based study in over 200,000 adults in England. And the second one, by contrast, a much smaller experimental medicine study looking at reasons for fatigue and exercise induced fatigue in people with long COVID. So of those two papers, the first one is a large epidemiology study um, that's come from the REACT team. They did a, a very large national uh, epidemiological study of COVID-19 throughout the pandemic uh, and published this study on long-term health impacts of COVID-19 um, in Nature Communications towards the end of last year. So this study enrolled a total of 242,712 adults living in England. Uh, of these, slightly more than half were female, slightly less than half male, and just less than 60% tested positive for SARS-CoV-2, the virus which causes COVID-19, on at least one occasion, uh, leaving 41% uh, not testing positive for SARS-CoV-2 at any time during follow-up. First of all, they looked at how long symptoms lasted, and the median duration was actually quite short, just a 1.3 weeks, around nine or 10 days. The interquartile range was six to 14 days. So that means that basically 50% of people had symptoms that lasted six to 14 days. 25% of people had symptoms that were less than six days. And 25% of people had symptoms that lasted longer than 14 days. Of those who had a SARS-CoV-2 infection, 7.5% still had symptoms at the 12 week time point, And 5.2% had symptoms at one year following their initial infection. In terms of risk factors for prolonged symptoms, uh, being female was associated with higher risk of long COVID, having one or more underlying illnesses, being infected early in the pandemic when the original variant was dominant and vaccine was unavailable, uh, having more severe symptoms at the time of infection, and being of white ethnic origin compared with being of Asian ethnic origin, all associated with increased risk for getting long COVID after an episode of SARS-CoV-2 infection. In terms of the prolonged symptoms that were most common, I think it's interesting to see that actually there's a very big overlap between this national, very large population-based cohort and our own findings as that you'll have seen in these webinars uh, in recent months. Um, Top of the list, loss or change of sense of smell or taste, followed by shortness of breath, severe fatigue, especially after exertion, and I'm going to touch a bit on that later on in the talk, difficulty thinking or concentrating, chest tightness or pain, and poor memory. So a really significant overlap between their findings and those presented by uh, Julia Vivaldi in recent webinars. But let's just drill down on this severe fatigue, because it's something that I know a lot of you are reporting, and I think there may be some interest in this second paper that I've identified that just came out uh, a week or two back at the beginning of January, looking at some of the physiology underlying uh, muscle fatigue after exercise in people with long COVID. So this is in the same journal, Nature Communications, very good journal, from a, a different group headed up by Brent Appleman, uh, published on January the 4th, as I say. Um, this was a very different kind of study to the first one that I described back then, um, which was very large population based. This is a, a small study just done in 46 people of whom 25 had SARS-CoV-2 infection and then went on to develop prolonged symptoms of COVID-19, so-called long COVID, uh, compared with 21 controls who are people who also had test proven SARS-CoV-2 infection, but who made a good and rapid recovery. And these two groups were matched in terms of age and gender, um, both in their early 40s, uh, around equally split between uh, men and women. So to summarise, uh, quite a complex study. Um, essentially, the participants were asked to undertake an exercise test uh, 
Uh, and then they also had a sample of muscle taken from one of the muscles in the thigh, so a muscle biopsy. And what essentially the team found was objective evidence that people in the long COVID group had lower exercise capacity. So this basically bears out essentially their own reports that their exercise capacity was compromised as a result of having had COVID. So no huge surprises there. What they were able to do by doing some quite detailed testing is work out the reasons why that was. But before I go on to that, let me just show you those data showing the VO2 max. This is a measure of exercise capacity on the y-axis here. Uh, and the people who had no prolonged symptoms in white blobs here and those who had long COVID in red blobs, you can see the exercise capacity of the people in the long COVID group was significantly lower than that of those in the control group. So essentially, when you have a problem with your exercise tolerance, this is either due to problems with gas exchange, so your ability to transfer oxygen from the air you breathe into the blood, um, also known as ventilation, or problems with cardiac function. In other words, the ability of your heart to pump blood through the lungs and distribute that oxygen to uh, the periphery of the body. And what they found was that the reason the people with long COVID had lower exercise capacity was not due to any problem with heart function. This was unimpaired in almost all participants. What it was due was due to poor ventilation, in other words, less good gas exchange at the lung, whereby oxygen is transferred from the inhaled air to the haemoglobin in the circulating blood. They then went on to look at the muscle biopsies and found that in addition to the difference in ventilation, so the ability to take oxygen on board, there were also differences in how muscle looked under a microscope in people who had long COVID versus those who didn't. And in particular, the people who had long COVID had a higher proportion of a type of muscle fibre called glycolytic muscle fibre. And this muscle fibre is one that fatigues more easily um, on exercise. So that's consistent with the idea that people with long COVID have lower exercise capacity. So two reasons identified, one, poor ventilation, and secondly, a change in the composition of muscle with an increase in the proportion of muscle fibres which tire more easily. Further studies under the microscope also showed that there were some deposits of a protein called amyloid in the muscles in long COVID. So there's definite evidence here that there's something going on with muscle structure in addition to issues with respiratory function that's contributing to fatigue after exercise in, in, in people with long COVID. And here you can see those data. So again, the data from the patients with long COVID is shown in red and the data points in white are those from the healthy controls. And you can see in this third column here, this column called type 2X and type 2A, 2X. These are the fibres that are more fatigable and you can see that their levels of those fibres or the percentage of the muscle that's composed of those fibres is higher in the dots in red, those patients representing people with long COVID versus the dots in white representing the controls. Then just to show you the data on the uh, deposition of this protein called amyloid in the muscle, again red is long COVID, white is healthy and you can see that both at baseline and also following exercise, the amount of amyloid deposited in the muscle was higher in the people who had long COVID versus the controls. Not only that, but when the investigators went on to do more detailed studies about how energy was processed in the muscle, they also found that the mitochondria, which are like the energy factories in the muscle, functioned less efficiently in people with long COVID compared to those who had recovered quickly from their SARS-CoV-2 infection. So why does this matter? Well, essentially, if we can get a handle on the reasons why muscle fatigues more uh, quickly in people with long COVID versus controls, we can then start to think about ways we might treat that. And in particular, this, uh, these findings support rationale for, medi medications, for investigating medications that may modify or restore 
function of these mitochondria, which are like the energy factories inside the cell. And you, some of you will remember a presentation that I did after visiting uh, the infection conference in Denmark uh, towards in the autumn of last year, um, suggesting that one of these medicines that modified mitochondrial function might improve outcomes in long COVID. So here's further evidence that this could be a fruitful area for investigation. And if you're interested in finding out a bit more, then this is a really uh, good piece of writing by um, Caroline Dalton uh, up at Sheffield Hallam University, um, who explains in plain language um, the key findings from the study looking at reasons why exercise tolerance is impaired in people with long COVID. I hasten to add that all of this work, none of it was done by us at Covidence UK. I just thought it'd be interesting to share results from other groups working in this area. So all that remains is for me to thank you once again for uh, dialing in to the webinar this month. Thank you also for continuing to complete your questionnaires and I look forward to catching up again next month when I hope to have something new for you. From all of us here at Covidence UK, goodbye. <laughs>